Hey, Jalen. Um, you know, I know the one and zero approach, and every game's its own game. Um, but is there is there a little more juice just sort of knowing that you know the postseason's around the corner and you're one win away? I mean, how do you guys sort of approach this thing mentally at this point? I mean, we're just excited to get a chance to be in the talks of even reaching that point. But at first, we got to handle Syracuse, and we're even excited to approach this week. Um, so we can be one and oh, and we're preaching one and oh, because that's really our mentality and that's our lifestyle. So we're just excited to come another week and be one and oh, to get to that point we want to get to, which is the championship. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein of the Sun Sentinel. Adam. Hey, Jalen, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Um, yeah, in the kind of the same vein, you don't have to name names, of course, but have you, have you or any other like leaders on the team had to kind of tell people, like, hey, settle down, focus on? Syracuse, like, don't look ahead, don't get caught up in social media and ESPN and whatever else, what they have to say. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the team does a really good job because we preach it every single day. It's not like anybody gets off track and then we have to approach, hey. But um, I think the biggest thing after that Georgia Tech loss going into the bye week, that was our biggest message as a leadership council. A um, season's not over. We're still in this. we got to just have that one and all mindset that we preach every single day. So um, we preach that every single day, and the guys on the team do a great job. And then just with Syracuse, uh, just what have you seen from them on film from their from their defensive front? Well, that's a team you should not take lightly. Um, they're a great team, um, offense to defense, um, but they're physical. They get after. They have high motor. Um, their defensive line is really good. So our offensive line has a good challenge this week. Next, we'll go to the birthday boy Jordan McPherson of the Miami Herald. Jordan, thanks, Josh. Uh, hey, Jalen. Uh, wanted to ask you since you came back from the injury, you've been alternating between left tackle and left guard, Markel gains some time at left tackle when you're inside. Just how do you feel that, that has gone with you moving between positions throughout the game and just how much do you value that versatility that you do have? First, happy birthday. Um, second, um, I want to say left guard is a spot that I've been playing since I've been here. My, my first two years of starting, I was at left guard, so it wasn't anything new. And then during that whole time I was out and injured, uh, Markel did a great job filling in at the left tackle spot. And I was just there for as a coach and, you know, as an ear for him for any advice he needed. And when I came back, he deserved the right to stay at left tackle and get reps at that spot. Um, and it wasn't like, oh, left tackle, um, I'm coming right in. No, uh, Markel deserved the right to keep playing as he should. So ever since I have came back, I've been – you see me alternating left guard and left tackle, and it's not that big of a change up. And I'm happy to be in there with Markel, um, just to give him a little um, advice during the game too. Me at left guard, you learn as a lot as a left tackle. Anybody like Markel, you learn a lot from me too. So he done a great job at that spot too, and he deserved because we haven't been um, we were one and zero each week. I was out because of him too, um, but he does a tremendous job, and nothing changed for me going left guard. Doesn't mix my head up. I've been playing. Um, left guard, left tackle, so nothing new to me. So I think uh, my versatility, everybody says that's a good thing about me. Next, we'll go to Tim Reynolds of the Associated Press. Tim? Hey, Jalen. Uh, I, I would also like to wish Jordan a happy birthday. I didn't know that, so there's that, first of all. Um, you guys have been in some loud environments, obviously, and you, you've seen it all kind of throughout your career, but the Dome is its own unique animal. It's super loud. It's obviously they're expecting a crazy environment. How much are you just looking forward to that atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, we look forward each week to play in a great atmosphere. Um, for us, the biggest thing is practice. Everyone knows what you do. No one going into a game is going to be a loud environment like a dome. Can't prepare anything for like that. But luckily we have an in, um, indoor facility where we just pump loud, crazy noises. So we get used to that noise so it doesn't surprise us on game day. So that's what we do. Get prepared for it. Um, we don't get startled by it. But come game day, we'll be prepared. But um, we're all excited to play in that type of environment, and we're not shying away from it. Jalen, real quick. I, I, obviously, the game is indoors, of course, but there, there there's a chance that you guys might see a couple inches of snow on the ground when uh, when you guys land on Friday. Um, when's the last time you saw snow? Uh, my mom is from Chicago, that area. Um, so you have. <laughs> I have seen snow. On the I've seen it probably when I was in middle school, I think. It's been a while, but I've seen it so before. Cool. Thanks, Jalen. Thank you. We'll do a couple more for Jalen. Next, we'll go to Andrea Adelson of ESPN. Andrea? Uh, hey, Jalen. Uh, the last time you guys went on the road, it obviously didn't go the way that you wanted. I was wondering if there are any lessons learned in terms of 
preparation from that game that uh, can help you get a different result this time? I forgot about that. I mean, like, that's been in our review. Um, we don't look at it as well last time we were home. I mean, last time we were away, uh, we weren't home. We lost. I was looking at next opportunity, next opportunity to get better. And it just so happened to be a away game. But we don't look at it as like, oh, we lost last home game or last away game. Um, we got to really, no, we just preach one and know every single week so we won't lose again. Um, and along those lines in that game, you guys struggled to run the ball. But last week, you did a great job. I'm wondering what were some of the keys against Wake that got the run game going and how you can carry that forward now uh, against Syracuse? Just us in, um, enforcing the run game. We preach every single week that we just want to run the ball off the line. And like us ourselves, the whole offensive line, we want to run the ball. So we just really talked to Coach Dawson and, you know, you know, our Coach Mirabal, we just let him know, hey, we're an old line. We need to improve that one time we didn't run the ball well that one game. We need to keep going and adding and attacking it and just find ways to execute better so we have a successful running game like we did the other game. Awesome, Jalen. We appreciate your time. Happy Thanksgiving and good luck on Saturday. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Yeah, hey, Kuko. Um, so obviously, you guys played really, really well the uh, the last three quarters um, plus of the most recent game. Is, is the sense from your perspective that, you know, the defense is sort of fixed back to how it looked early in the season? Or is there still a lot that you guys see on film that still needs to be correct that, you know, that a different team might have taken advantage of? Well, yeah, um, one thing that we emphasized going into that game was being able to communicate, align, and doing our assignment at and, you know, as we emphasize those uh, on a bye week, you know, it showed up on the game. So um, we're going to keep on moving forward and emphasizing those little details in our game so, be, so we can be able to play fast. And, um, yeah, I mean, those were like the little adjustments that we kind of had, uh, you know, we lacked in um, on, pre on previous games that, you know, that now we, you know, we, we got on it. So I think um, everybody's going to be on the same page because we're going to be talking and, and we're going to be playing fast because everybody's on the same page. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichten, seen in the Sun Sentinel. Adam? Hey, Kiko. How are you? I'm good. You? Good. Good. Um, so when I, I asked Coach Gidry about you, you know, how, you know, you had a really good game on Saturday. And he mentioned that um, kind of we're still dealing with, you know, a bit, you know, some of that nagging stuff from your labrum surgery and stuff. Just how, what was the process of the recovery like that? How do you manage that recovery throughout the season? And, and how do you feel now? Oh, yeah, I feel a lot better now. Um, you know, it comes and goes, but, uh, um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I mean, it, I got no excuse. And, you know, my job is to be able to get everybody on the same page. It's my responsibility that, you know, the defense is, you know, aligned and set. So uh, my main focus is being able to um, do that and also be able to focus on my body so I can perform at the highest level. But, you know, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. There's, there's no problem at all. And then looking at, at Syracuse, obviously they like to pass the ball a lot. Um, I think if I remember right, you know, a lot of the short game kind of stuff, just, you know, how have you guys been, without giving away the whole game plan, um, how have you guys been kind of approaching that, you know, studying it on film and stuff? Yeah, I mean, Syracuse shows a lot on the film. Um, they got a really good quarterback with, you know, good core receivers that can run routes. And um, they got a really good quarterback that can throw the ball, put the ball at the right spot. He's very accurate. Um, he, he uses his legs when, when he needs to. So, um, for us, it's a big challenge for us. Um, I, we're, we're ready for it. We're excited um, for the opportunity. And, you know, we're just going to attack it day by day. Uh, we're going to focus on our craft and be able to um, tune those things so, um, you know, we don't give them any uh, opportunity to, you know, score on us. So. Next, we'll go to Andrea Adelson of ESPN. Andrea? Kiko, when you have an offense like theirs where the quarterback runs, but they also use the running back a lot, uh, in the passing game, what kind of challenges does that present for the defense? Um, I mean, we 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 have a game plan for that. Um, Coach G throw, draws out uh, a great game plan for us to perform, so we can play, you know, fast and not be able to think. So, uh, I think going into this game, um, you know, the defense is we're, we're ready. Um. Just being able to lock into in those details and trust the trust the game plan, so we could you know um, be able to perform at a high level and make making sure that everybody's on the same page. So, yeah, we'll do a few more for Kiko. Next, we'll go to Cass Clayton. Cass, hey Kiko, it's C two. 
question about, I mean, I know you're a leader in the linebacker room directly. What are you telling, you know, the other linebackers to stay focused and stay locked in going into this game? Yeah, I mean, we emphasize that, um, you know, in our in our room and, you know, out here in practice, too. Um, so when, you know, when anybody is out there doing a rap, you know, you got to be paying attention. You got to lock in like you're playing. So if you're not in, you got to have your mental rep. So if I ask you a question, um, you got to come up with an answer and you better be right. So if, if not, you, you're giving us 10. But um, I think us as linebackers, you know, it's our it's our responsibility um, to, to get everybody aligned. So, so it don't matter who's going to be out there. So um, that's that's the little details that us as linebackers and, you know, all the young guys too got to come along. Um, so that but when they when they get opportunity and they get a chance to to perform, um, they're they're ready. So, yeah. Next, we'll go to Marcus Benjamin at Canes County. Marcus. Hey, Kiko, how's it going? Good. Kiko, I wanted to ask about signing day, which is kind of coming up next week. So, um, you've been with the program now two years. What would your pitch be to? a player that is thinking about Miami, knowing, you know, the culture uh, that's at the school and just your experience. And what would you tell a recruit about Miami and why would you tell them to commit to Miami? Yeah. I mean, Miami is a phenomenal place. Um, when you got coaches and a culture like this, like there's nothing better than that. And that's a, that's a big reason why to come here because, you know, everybody's all locked in. Um, the culture is, is great. And, you know, you've got a competitive spirit that's, Every single day you come in here, you're going to get better. And that's what you want as a player. So I think um, just being able to come here and be able to um, um, learn from Coach uh, Derek Nicholson and Coach uh, Cristobal it's, and Coach Gidry, it's been a huge impact in my life, um, not only on football, but also in life. So I'm, I'm thankful for that opportunity, and I'm, and I'm thankful for, for this journey. Awesome, Kiko. We appreciate your time. Happy Thanksgiving, and good luck on Saturday. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Hey, Ecstasy 2. I have a two-part question. The first question is, in this stage right now, a lot of my high school players are going through their last football game or they're uncertain of where they would go for the next stage. I know you've been through a lot of adversity, so what advice would you give to those student athletes in this stage? No doubt. I mean, um, the first advice I would give to them is just pray about it. You know, I always heavily influence guys to um, just, again, use their faith to lead them in the right direction. You know, um, doors will open, doors will close, and it all happens for a reason, you know. Um, for the football aspect of it, I guess you just have to go where you're wanted. You know, um, it's not so much of where you want to go. Yeah, like, it would be awesome, you know, to go where you want to go. And if both of them happen at the same time, um, that's great, you know. But um, I say go where you're wanted because, um, I mean, college is going to be, you know, the best years of your, of your life. So you just got to go where you're wanted and so that you feel, you know, important. And my next question is, thank you. My next question is, you've been such a, you know, you made such a big impact without your time uh, at the University of Miami. When it's all said and, said and done, what message did you want to leave to the fans or, or to the people? For sure. I just want to say thank you for always supporting me, always having my back, always believing in me, and um, just being the best you know, fans in the whole entire country. Um, I'm definitely going to miss this place. I mean, we still have a lot of work to do. You know, we have a couple of weeks of, ahead of us. Um, but right now, you know, Syracuse game, we need as many fans from the Northeast over there. And, uh, yeah, finish this regular season out with a bang. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein of the Sun Sentinel. Adam? Hey, X, how are you? Great, how are you? Good. Um, so, I know we've asked you about uh, Cam Ward probably 500 times in the last nine months. Um, he was just named a Davy O'Brien Award finalist. Um, so, just you know, having played with him, gotten to know, getting to know him over the last nine months, just, is there anything that – kind of surprises you about him still anything that he does on the field off the field that like still kind of takes you back yeah what uh surprises me is you know he's having all this you know attention from you know the heisman and the o'brien trophy and all that stuff and it's like he's not even trying to pay attention to all that stuff you know he, like he's uh like our media team does a great job you know putting us out there and stuff like that um but they're reaching out to him and he's just focused on football you know <laughs> me and him are 
you know, every single morning watching film at, you know, five or six. And, um, I mean, all he's trying to do is just get better and just try to dominate each and every single week. So, um, if I say surprise, I guess that's the thing that surprises me. But um, he's been the same guy each and every single day ever since January, since he's got here. Um, again, just a relentless leader and just a super competitor. Next, we'll go to Tim Reynolds of the Associated Press. Tim? Thanks, Josh. Hey, X. Um, good, thanks. I, I saw you when the game ended Saturday. You clearly were just you know, just soaking it all in, just sort of sitting there with, with your family and just taking that last proverbial long look around. I'm just curious what that moment was like for you and what, what the snapshot in your head from, from that, from that little moment of time was. No doubt. I mean, it was the regular season, last regular season game I'll ever play in hard rock um, as a hurricane, you know? So uh, it was just like, I just saw everything from the past four or five years, just, all happening in front of me, you know, um, all the trials and tribulations that I did, um, everything that I went through, you know, um, it was just all coming to like a, a, a census, you know, and um, there was a breeze flowing. So I felt the Holy Spirit there, you know, uh, carrying my spirit. And um, I mean, yeah, it was just time to, you know, take back, take a seat and just breathe, you know, because, um, I mean, as, you know, student athletes, all we're doing nonstop is just working, 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 working. So um, it was a, it was good just to sit back and, you know, analyze just hard rock and just with all the fa players running on the field, all the families, and it was a good time. I, I know this, this question would, would take you like an hour to answer in full, but your whole world has changed in these five years. Your whole family's world has changed in these last five years. What's it mean to you that you were able to do all that? It means a lot, you know. Um, I mean, the only thing that I stress about and not even stress about, but I pray about is just opportunity. You know, I'm I'm super confident in myself um, because I am a God-fearing man and I know that he has everything already done. You know, the stories are already written. He has... um he's put me through everything, you know, that you could possibly go through. Um, so, I mean, I'm just super confident in myself. I just pray for opportunity, you know, and um, again, I've got my opportunity and I've capitalized on it, you know? Um, I mean, going back to my family. Yeah, for sure. I mean, our lives have changed tremendously, um, but we never forget where we came from. You know, we're the same people um, shop at the same places, eat at the same places, live in the same places, you know? So, um, except for, you know, churches <laughs> and the streets. But, um, I mean, again, everything is the same. Thanks, X. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, sir. Likewise. We'll do a few more for X. Next, we'll go to Andrea Adelson of ESPN. Andrea? X, uh, you came to Miami with the hope and goal of elevating the program, getting back to winning championships. What's the feeling like knowing that you're one win away from getting closer to that goal? No doubt. I mean, I think you said it in your question. We're one win away. So I think the only thing we're focused on right now is Syracuse. You know, um, we just have to control the controllable and let everything else, you know, happen. Um, our only goal this week is, you know, focusing on Syracuse. We got a really, really good, big defense, talented, can run, um, play, plays together well, and plays super hard, especially at home. You know, so um, we're, we have a tough, 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 tough opponent this week. So we just have to lock in and just focus on this week. How do you keep the focus on just this week when you know there's something bigger waiting with a win? Right. I think um, just our culture, our team culture, um, just overemphasizing our team culture each and every single day, each and every single meeting, each and every single practice, just going as hard as we could. And we know that the secret to success is practicing hard, you know, so we have to just get after it on Green Tree and the IPF and, um, Again, just go at it with each other, you know, um, just knowing that we love each other and we respect each other so much that we're going to give each other our all. Last two for X here. We'll go to Zuby Charles at Kane Sport and then Marcus Benjamin at Kane's County. Zuby, we'll start with you. What's going on, X? Uh, I don't know if you remember, but during your kids camp, you know, this summer I asked you, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, Miami's offense? And you said, hey, we have the potential to be the most explosive offense in the country. And now you guys are, you know, number one in points and yards per game. Just 
from your perspective, what's led to, you know, your guys' success, you know, through the air and on the ground, you know, this year on the offensive side of the ball? Um, a couple of things. I think our team culture. I think um, our team culture has trickled, trickled over into our offense. Um, I mean, we just take everything serious. You know, we attack lifts, we attack meetings. Um, we watch extra film. We put the extra work in. Um, our timing is getting better and better each and every single day. And, um, yeah, I mean, the athletes speak for itself. You know, we have the best quarterback, the best tight end, best receivers, best running backs, and most importantly, the best O-line in the entire country. You know, so um, we have the players. It's, it just all comes down to execution. And um, games that you see us, you know, not doing so well in, you know what it is. It's not a lack of, you know, skill or you know athlete it's lack of execution um so that's the only thing that we're focusing on is just getting better and better each and every single day executing at the highest level possible we'll wrap up for x with marcus benjamin at canes county marcus hey x how's it going great how are you good uh there's been some talk of, uh, about wide receivers coach Kevin Beard on social media. I just want to get your perspective on him as basically a teacher or developer of the wide receiver room and just how he's developed you in these last two years as your coach. No doubt. So to piggyback off that first question, I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding, you know, um, men lie, women lie, um, members don't, you know, so um, you see the numbers each and every single year, just gradually going up and up and up and up. So, I mean, he has to be doing something right, you know. Um, of course, there's going to be, you know, haters saying that, you know, he just gets the best guy and stuff like that. He doesn't even focus on all that. You know, he he, he thinks that, that that stuff is a joke because, again, he's a very God-fearing man and he understands that he was put on this earth to, you know, serve us, you know, and he does an amazing job at that. We have so much respect and love for Coach KB. He does an amazing job each and every single week getting us the most prepared that we can be. And, um, yeah, I mean, to go back on your second question about me, he's just, you know, been on me, you know, and he has great assistant coaches as well. You know, Coach Cooney and um, Coach Varner, they are just amazing. You know, um, they could be – it's like we have three receiver coaches in the same room, you know. Um, I mean, Coach – Varner is always on me. That's who I spend most of my time with. He is always on me about literally everything, the smallest things. Um, and Coach Cooney handles the outside guys. He's the same exact way. And that's just a reflection on Coach KB, what he preaches, what he emphasizes. Again, he there's one chief in the room, there's Coach KB, you know, and the rest are Indians, and we're, we're, we're very much good followers, you know, because he does a really great job of setting – you know, the example in the room. And I mean, again, we have the best receiver coach in the nation. Awesome, Max. We appreciate your time. Uh, happy Thanksgiving and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, hey, Cam. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, of course, um, you got a big game coming up, but I wanted to ask you about the Senior Bowl invite. I think you were the, you were the first one that was invited. It seemed like it was sort of a big deal, um, you know, for a guy like you who sort of wasn't recruited out of high school except by one school. I mean, is that a special moment for you having something like that happen? Um, not really. It's not really a special moment. Um, it's an honor to get the invite. Um, but I got I got bigger stuff in my mind right now than a senior bowl. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein in the Sun Sentinel. Adam. Hey, Cam, how are you? Good. Uh, so kind of similarly, uh, you just named a finalist for the Walter Camp Award and the um, Davey O'Brien Award. Um, I know, you know, if I were to ask you what that means to you, you'd probably say not much. But, um, you know, when, when how do you kind of keep that, like, so far out of your mind? Like, it, it, like I'm sure you hear it, and I'm sure you hear all the, the accolades, the praise and everything. How, how do you kind of block that all out? Um, I think you block it out by, I'll have, I'll have to say by really paying no mind to it. And what I mean by that is one, getting off that phone and two, letting it go through one ear out the other. Cause at the end of the day, um, a lot of stuff can change week, week by week. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, you gotta be consistent. Um, I think that's why, you know, 
I'm up for some of these. Uh, the receiving core, the O-line, they helped me out a lot. Those guys, they've been consistent. I've been consistent. So, you know, none of that, none of that means nothing if you can't win football games. And then just looking ahead at Syracuse this week, um, just what have you seen from their defense on film? Uh, they do a lot of different things. Um, early in the season, they want to do some three down. Uh, past couple of games, they've been four down. Uh, they do a lot of different looks, coverage wise, uh, within their within their fronts. Um, for the defense, um, they probably have some guys back who were hurt in previous games. Um, so you know, we just gonna be prepared for what they do. Um, we gotta be able to see space, take advantage of leverage. Um, you know, just you know, try to win a football game. Next, we'll go to Tim Reynolds of the Associated Press. Tim. Thanks, Josh. Cam, I, I know it's not you guys playing one-on-one -on -one out there, obviously, and you're more focused on Syracuse's defense, but I'm curious what you've seen from Kyle McCord and the numbers he's put up this year. Um, I really haven't been paying attention to Kyle. Uh, I don't have time to watch other quarterbacks. Um, I watched a couple of his because we played similar teams, uh, so the defense, um, but I'm not – Taking time out of my day to watch to watch him right now. He's doing good though. Uh, he top he top five in the country. So you know he's balling right now for sure. But I'm not watching his tape. I appreciate that. Thanks, Cam. Next, we'll go to Andrea Adelson of ESPN. Andrea. Hey, Cam. Uh, I know you came to uh, Miami to accomplish big things, and I asked X this question. You know, how does it feel knowing that you're one win away? from getting closer to accomplishing what you set out to do? Uh, it's special. Um, that's the only thing that we really uh, – was the main focus for us the whole season um, is to get a chance every week to play for ACC championship, and we've been doing that so far. Um, but we know we got to – we got this is the time where you got to pull through the most. Um, no matter, you know, how you got to get it, by all means, whether, you know, whether it's one-sided, two-sided, or all three phases – you know, playing together, we got to find a way to get a win. So, you know, it, it's good for us. Um, we can control our destiny another week. And, you know, we're going to try to control it this Saturday. How do you guys maintain the focus on getting this win without thinking about the big things that await? Um, then you maintain the focus because there is no next week without this week. Um, like this is the championship game, so. We got we to win this to get there. So, you know, we're not really worried about the future. Thank you. We'll do a few more for Cam next. We'll go to Cass Clayton. Cass? Hey, Cameron. C2. X just told us that you did not change since January. You've been the same guy, even throughout the Heisman campaign, throughout all the notoriety that you're receiving. How does one stay the same throughout all this time i know you said it goes in one end and out the other but i mean behind closed doors when it's just you and your dog do you ever reflect back on all of this uh probably after the season i will um i just think as you know being a college football player your the the schedule doesn't change but you know your process has to be week to week. Um, that's really the lifestyle that we live, um, a new opponent every week. Um, and I just think it doesn't give us time to really reflect during the season on everything that we've accomplished. Um, we only have time to reflect it, you know, after that last game is done. Um, so, you know, I just think the just the, the sport where we play doesn't give us that time to reflect. And then you had such a big impact in such a short time for the, the Miami fans. You know, they love you. What message do you want to send to them when it's all said and done? I know there's a big uh, goal at the end of this, but when it's all said and done, what message did you want to send to them? Um, Just that they, you know, enjoy, you know, come to watch us play hard rock. Um, I just want to be named a good teammate. Uh, I think if I can do that, um, a, lot of take, a lot of other stuff will take care of itself. Uh, but, you know, I enjoy playing at hard rock. Um, every Saturday, um, I'm glad we was able to go undefeated at home. So, you know, you know, hard rock mean a little something. Thank you. You're welcome. Last couple for Cam. We'll go to Azubi Charles of Kane Sport. Azubi? What's going on, Cam? On a bit of a lighter note, with Thanksgiving coming up, I want to ask you, you know, your favorite Thanksgiving, you know, meal and what's something that won't be touching your plate this Thanksgiving, too? Um, My favorite, favorite, 
dish is the peach cobbler and broccoli rice casserole. Um, what will never touch my plate on Thanksgiving is chitlins. We'll wrap up for Cam with Marcus Benjamin at Canes County. Marcus? Hi, Cam. Uh, with uh, signing day coming up next week, uh, I just kind of wanted to ask uh, from your perspective uh, or what your pitch would be to a recruit that's thinking about Miami. Um, yeah, just from your experience here in, in this one year, I know it's only been one year, obviously, but what would you tell them about the experience of Miami and why they should commit to the U? Um, I think the the why, the why part is why they should come. Um, one, you're going to have good coaches. You're going to have a, one of the best staffs out there. Um, but it's the the brand of Miami holds a lot of weight, in my opinion, compared to a lot of the other schools out there. Um, the the notoriety the notoriety that you'll that you'll get, uh, especially with Miami, is having a good season. Um, and I just think the think the on field stuff would take care of everything else off the field. Um, I mean. Uh, Miami is one of the best place, places to play at when they're at a high level. Uh, you know, we're seeing that. We're seeing that this year. So, you know, uh, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, we're not going to be giving to you. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, if you come in, you know, you're ready to work and be a team player for the team, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, will uh, take care of itself. Whether you got to sit your first year, uh, learn the offense or defense. Um, but, you know, you just got to have the, have the right mindset every day to get better. If you do that, you end up, you know, Say you don't play year one, you end up playing down the road, and you end up being, you know, the team to keep Miami, you know, just winning every at every uh, at, you know, every year, you know, on for. Awesome, Cam. We appreciate your time. Happy Thanksgiving and good luck on Saturday. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir.